Hello everyone, how are you doing today? 6-3? October, November 6-3? Or do you mean 5-3? Alright, so uh, I basically selected this one because it has logs and I wanted to go through this. So we can basically do something else the next. So mostly you have problems in question two. So we're going to first do question two, and then we're going to head to question number one. OK? So talking about this paper, in fact, um, all right. And then Gatika sent me a paper as well, and I think uh, Buddy, you also sent me a paper, so we're going to review those as well. OK? All right. So for the very first question, you need to basically learn about you know, making things like an equation. For example, in this, it says a graph needs to be plotted of LGT on y-axis and LGM on x-axis. So how do we do this? So you're going to take log of t and then log of 2 pi and q over under root k, just like that, OK? When you've done this, then what happens is that actually you can basically write sort of you know, an equation like all these things can be changed like in logs if you have product so you can write it as lg m raised to the power q when it's multiplying you add a positive sign and lg 2 pi and then when it is negative you can basically put it as um, lg and you can basically like like you can you can multiply, uh, you can add like one upon under root k like this, okay? Now, this then becomes LG, this Q will come out because it will be here and M will become a function. This will be LG 2 pi, LG 2 pi. And in logs, if you want to bring something to the top, right? Like if you want to write it as uh, LGK, like LG under root K, then you put a negative sign here because you're basically dividing it like that. Okay, so you do that. Then LGT equals to Q LGN, and then this will be LG 2 pi and minus. Now K has a power of half on it because under root is half, so you can put half here. And this will be LG of K just like this. Okay. So that's pretty easy in that sense. Okay. Now you want to basically compare this Y equals to MX plus C. So all of this becomes C. So you can write LG 2 pi minus half LG K as C. And obviously, the uh, other thing is the gradient. Gradient is this, which is Q. And the X axis needs to be LGM, and Y axis needs to be Y. So I, if I were you, I'd do this like this. Okay. Then what happens is that in this part, which is the most important to make the table, uh, so I'm going to just teach you some of the things here. So it says record uh, the values of t and lgt. Okay, so first of all, this is two times. I don't know how, how many oscillations these are, so let's read about that. It says stopwatch is used to measure time for 10 oscillations. So this is 10 oscillations, okay? So what are we going to do? We're going to add these two. And when we do add these two, we're going to divide it by two to take like the average of t. And then when we divide it by 10, we're going to get t. So that's what we are doing right here. Okay. So to do this, just pull out your calculator quickly. And also do it with me, because I just want to make sure that you guys 
have an idea. Divide by 10, so it should be 1.56, this one. Then you have to make sure that row-wise, row-wise, um, your significant figures are same. Okay. So then it will be 18.3 plus 17.5 divided by 2, divided by 10. So that's 1.79. Similarly, 19.3 plus 20.1 divided by 2, divided by 10. So that's going to be 2. Uh, oh, what did I do? Oh, my God. You have to add this and then divide by 2 and then divide by 10. So you 1.97. Then comes the next one. This divide by 2. So take average and then divide by 10. 2.14. 23.5. Always like take out some time to do this in your exam as well because you don't want to make a mistake here because everything then will be pretty messed up. 2.31. And 24.1 plus 24.9. Divide by 2, divide by 10. So that's going to be 2.45, like that. Okay. Yes, Faisal, you can always write that. That's all right. Then you can basically go to the next, and you have to basically take LG of T. So that's pretty simple. All you need to do is just keep on taking logs log of 1.56 is going to be 0 0.193. Now, why am I writing this in three significant figure right now? Why is this three? Let me just write it with a different color, three SF, because this is in three SF. So you guys need to remember that they must have the same significant figure. You can also take can take one more also, one more than that. So you can also write in four if you want to, like 1931 can also be right. So then log 1.79, so 0 0.0.2523, 0 sorry. So that's how it's going to be. Do not make this mistake. Every value is checked. So I believe that you guys are going to do it right. 0 0.294. I don't have to round it up if it's 4. Yes, it will be uploaded. It will be saved. Okay, then. Log of 2.14. That's 0 0.330. So that's why it is essential to write 0 here. Otherwise, it will be wrong. Then uh, you got to write... 2.31, that's 0 0.364. So round it correctly, please. Then you got to write 2.45, which is 0 0.389. So that should be the correct one. Now, how do we, this is, uh, this paper is 5-1, yes, October, November. Okay. We're looking at this because it had logs, that's why. Now we need to write the uncertainties. So how do we find uncertainties when it comes to logs? So let's uh, discuss that. So the rule for finding uncertainties, I'm just writing how to find uncertainty. So best method to do this is you want to take the log of the maximum value. And then you want to subtract it by log of the minimum value and then you're going to divide this by two and this will give you the uncertainty for this so for the first one what you're going to do is you guys know that it's basically the range is between 16 and 15.2 as you can see okay so what you're going to do is you're going to basically take log of 16 minus 
log of 15.2. Oh, by the way, this is not right. You have to basically, these were 10 oscillations, right? So 1.6, and this would be 1.52. Okay, so you take this and then divide by two. So you will get this in um, this number of figures, okay? So 0. Point zero 0.01, like that. So if you want to take it, you can take it too significant in this because of the fact that um, the thing is that in table, sometimes the values are very small, so it's allowed to take more than one significant figure, so don't worry about that. Then for the next one, you're going to take log of 1.75 minus log of 1.83 and then divide by 2, sorry, divide by 2. So this is 0 0.0097. Okay, so I'm just writing it this way. So just to make sure that you guys understand this clearly. You can also round it off, like, if you want to keep it the same. Then... Um, you're going to do log of 20.1, sorry, uh, log of 2.01 minus log of 1.93 and then divide by 2. This is 0 0.009. The next one, please. So let's let's just okay. It won't let me do it. So log so of zero seven zero zero eight eight right for the previous ones. You can write it. It's okay. okay. All right. I'm just following the. If the, I've taken three uh, decimal places, I'm just keeping up with that. Okay. That's why I'm writing like this. All right, Gatika. Okay. Log of two point one, and then divide by two. So this is going to be zero. 0 0.00. This one, the one that we're looking at, is particularly hard one. But generally, logs are not that hard. This paper is generally hard, so that's why I picked it. So it's 2.35 minus log of 2.27 and then divide it by 2. So this is going to be 0 0.0075 or 8 again fine then we can do um, the next is 0 point uh, 2.4 log of 2.49 minus log of 2.41 and then divide it by 2 so this is going to be 0 0.007 like that okay if you have any questions here, please let me know how I did this. It's very important to follow this method. So could you explain the method? Like, where do you, how do you get this answer? Log max minus log min over 2. How did you know this is the equation to be used? This is the equation to find uncertainties in logs. Ready? There's no other equation. Do you get my point? So wait, but for uh, 52 October, November 19th, the paper that we did beforehand, you did uh, log R plus uncertainty in R minus log R. Why is that not the one you shared? You can also do that. It will give you the same answer. Like, if you want to use this, like, for example, log 1.56 uh, and minus log of the maximum value or the minimum value, whatever, 1.52, okay? It will give you the same answer, Betty. Now, so you asked me why I'm using this here and not log of the mean value minus the log of mean plus or the max value or minimum value. That's what you're saying, minimum value. No, sir, we didn't talk about maximum minimum before. We were talking about taking the uncertainty. 
And we didn't do that for T here. Where is the uncertainty for T? The uncertainty basically is that basically this is like 1.56 in the middle. This is the mean value. The maximum value here is 16. And the minimum value is 15.2. I mean 1.525. And 1.60. Do you understand? Like that. So either you're going to do max minus minimum divided by 2. Or you can subtract any of these two. You understand? What you're talking okay, about? You. What you're talking okay, about okay. is when they have given a sum, like if they had given t as 1.56 plus minus 0 0.02. Let's suppose they have given this, right? Right. So you can basically take it as log of 1.56 minus log of 1.56 minus 0 0.02 you're talking about this one right right this is the yeah. same thing this is the same thing if i take it as log of 1.56 plus 0 0.02 this is the maximum value minus log of 1.56 minus 0 0.02 and then divide by 2 it is the same formula nothing different this question it has it has not given us the uncertainty directly, but the range of the values. Do you get it? So we don't write plus minus for after 1.56 to find the uncertainty in the time. If we don't. You, if you want to do that, you can obviously add it. No worries. But they haven't asked. They have asked for this. OK, we can yes. write this. Okay, we, so what okay. is it? Yes, yes, they have asked. I'm sorry. Okay. Let's do this. So what is, what is it? You subtract these two and divide by two. Like 1.6 minus 1.52 divided by two, 0 0.04. You get it? Right, okay. 1.75 minus 1.83 divided by two. All of them are 0 0.04, right? So if you calculate, they are all of them like this. But you can, you have to basically this minus this divided by two. You get it, uh, and after dividing it, then right. So then you can use it directly, or you can use this formula. That's up to you. But I recommend this formula 100%. The reason why I think you should not be using log of mean minus log of minimum because when i found these values they were rounded off to some degree do you agree definitely they're not exactly the same values but these are exact values so i have used the exact ones to get the most precise value that i can get you get it right yes Fazan, you can do that Yes, that is correct. But I would not basically recommend that. Why I would not recommend doing log of 1.6 minus log of 1.56? Because why I do not recommend? Because th this value has been rounded off. So which means there might be some portion of uncertainty again according to that because it's not the exact value because when we found this you guys uh, should remember when we found this you know we did 1.6 minus uh, sorry 1.6 plus 1.52 and then we divided by 2 so we got like this value if this is if this is exact you can obviously use this value but sometimes it's not so that's not recommended then. Okay, like that. Okay, so you guys need to remember this. Always use this. This is a better method, in my opinion. Anyway, so now that you have this, so it says plot a graph between this and this. This is another important point. So let's do that. Um, for the graph thing, I think it would be best that I also open this on the other screen so that I can see 
what I have done. But for that, I also need to paste it. That's not good. What do I need to do then? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I really don't know. So what do I do? I can copy this table. Let's take a screenshot. Let's save this. And oh my goodness. Let's take a screenshot. Put it to PDF expert. This would help. Wait. Because I don't want to look at it again and again. Convert, please. OK. Now let's go to our main work like here. And now let's do this. So keeping up with this, then we have to draw this graph, which is already labeled, so you don't have to do anything, literally nothing. So first of all, we are doing these two things. So LGM is right here, as you guys see. So first of all, the point is about plotting. In plotting, you guys should have no blobs. No blobs means that your point that you put must not be thicker than half this box. So if your point is like this, this thick, it is wrong. If your point is small, that's good. All right. So if you put a, uh, if you put a point, you can basically put a dot and a circle. Dot and a circle is needed because dot is small sometimes, so examiner cannot see. And you can also put a cross, but it should not be like a colored cross like this, please. It's not a painting class, it's physics, so don't do this. Anyway, now for plotting, let's do plots. So all points must be plotted, obviously. And now let's have a look. So first is 2.190. Now, one tip to understand what this one box represents. So you can subtract these two values, like 2.3 minus 2.2. So generally, it would give you uh, an idea, like 2.3 minus 2.2. And because there are 10 boxes, you can divide by 10. So each box, each small box, represents 0 0.01. So that's easier for us to then see. Okay. So we need 2.190. So 2.1. This is 2.11. And 2.19. 19 is going to be right here, right? Because then it becomes that yeah so this point and the other point is 0 0.193 so let's also look at what is the difference in one box here so what you can do is uh, 0 0.20 minus 0 0.18 and then divide by 10 so each box represents 0 0.002 so i'm just going to write 0 0.002 just to help me you know quickly get it so 1.93 so this will be 1.9 0 0.19 and three is going to be, yes. I've got a small question related to the table. 0 0.253 plus minus 0 0.009 is my answer, not 0 0.001. This is uh, uh, this one. And it also looks wrong. The second one in the log T in seconds, yes. 0 0.253 plus okay. minus. Plus minus. 0 0.09. It should 0 .09. be 0 .09. Yes, yeah, that's the value. It was, so I convert it into one. That's one. So how come it's small here and then 0 0.009 is directly under? So that's a bigger value. Let me try. Let me try. Wait a second again. See? Uh, so what we're doing is a log of 1.83 minus log of 1.75, right? and then divide by 2. So it's 0 0.009. Yeah, it is 0 0.0. You're right, 0 0.01, like that, right? Agreed? Right. Good. OK, that was the mistake. Thank you, buddy. Now, so it means our value right here is wrong. OK, let me correct this here. So this value was 0 .0 0 0.01. OK, fine. So then. Let's see if this is like 0 0.19, it means 0 0.192 is this, 0 0.194 is this. So it will be somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to put right here, I'm going to put a cross like this. Okay, just do it like that. That's fine. 
and then the next one is 2.312 uh, 2.3 uh, 2.312 will be somewhere you know somewhere here so we're going to put here and then the next point is 2.0.253 and 0 0.252 0 0.24 so here and that would be somewhere i think right here okay so i'm going to put a cross here a very small cross you need to put okay then next is 2.398 2.398 will be almost like 2.4 so right next to this line and then 2.94 so where's 2.94 2.9 is this one 2.92 2.94 okay so let's go here and right here let's put a small cross that's it Okay, then the next is 2.484, 2.4, 8 is going to be here, 2.49 is going to be somewhere in the middle, okay? So this will be our point, and then what's next? 0 0.330, 330, 3, 3 is going to be right here, 333, 3, 3, 2, 3, 4, somewhere here, okay? So let's look at this. Okay. So, and I wish I had a full paper. This is very, you know, tiring. Uh, uh, okay, wait. I think it should be. Yeah, I've reached the same point. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put across here. That's fine. And then what's next? 0, 2.550. 2.55 is here. Exactly right here. And then 3.64. 0 0.3636. 362. 364. So that's right here. And that's right here. Okay, right here, I believe. Okay, so let's just cut it off okay then the next is 0 0.2613 261 2613 should be somewhere here and just one box here and the next one is 3.89 3.824689 and nine would be here okay so let's go here and right here okay that's what we are looking for so our uh, plotting is done when your plotting is done so you need to plot all the points and then finally you need to basically do error bars now error bars are horizontal vertical depending on which quantity you are looking at so right now our quantity is uh, LGT and LGT is right here. So our error bars are going to be vertical in this case. All right. Now this I'm gonna when I'm gonna go to the first question, I'm gonna answer that question. Uh, you can have a little bit. A uh, little bit change. The paper is being like 2019, There's, there can be a little bit, you know, uncertainty in that. Like maybe if your point was supposed to be here, but your point is little bit shifted to this side, that's fine. But it should not be like shifted more than half box to either side. That would be wrong. Okay. All right. So now doing the error bar. So first one is 0 0.11, which is the first point right here. 0 0.1. So you guys understand that actually each this this whole thing was 0 0.002, right? Zero point zero zero two. So zero point zero one means how many boxes are going to be top or below. So if you want to do this, you just need to do zero point zero one one divided by zero point zero zero two. This will tell you how many boxes you need to go above and below. Okay. This is easy this way, so 5.5 .5 boxes. So we're gonna do, is already half, so that's gonna be 
0.5123456 like this 0.512345 just like this so this should be your error bar like that okay the next one next uncertainty let me see was 0 0.01 so 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.002 is five boxes so i'm going to go like this is half already so one two three four and half so that's going to be one two three four and half so these are five boxes exactly i think or is it it's not right 0 0.5 then one, two, three, four, five, and point five again. So this would be the half box. Okay, so this is five. And then next one was 0 0.09. So again, you can pull out the calculator, you can do 0 0.009 divided by each box, which is 0 0.002. So we need 4.5 boxes now. So it's in the middle. So one, two, three, four, and then 4.5. One, two, one, two, three, oh my god. One, two, three, four, and four point five. Like that. Okay, so we got the error bar right here as well. Then come to this one. This one is 0 0.008. So I think that's four boxes. So it's in the middle. So one, two, three, four, and a half. So that would be four boxes. One, two, three, four, and a half. So four boxes right here as well. Okay, so that's an error bar. Next is 0, 0.00, again, four boxes. One, two, three, four. That is exactly the same. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, like that. And then here, one, oh, we have to find this, sorry. So 0 0.007, I think it should be 3.5 boxes, but I, I'm not sure. So I'm going to divide it anyway. 3.5, OK. Oh my god. Uh, 3.5. So 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3. So like that. And 0 0.5, 1, 2, and 3. Like that. So we got our error bars done. Looks very pretty, which is cool. So once you're done with error bars, now you need to draw the line of best fit. So what are the rules for line of best fit? Line of best fit. Line of best fit must have equal points above and below. So this is the first rule. And the second rule for this is all points must be close. Now, there is no mention. Now, what is the, uh, what is the, uh, some people have this, you know, ambiguity. So ambiguity. Ambiguity is that people say most of the points must be on the line. And that is absolutely crap. Absolutely not true. So do not follow this, OK? So these two rules are the ones that you need to follow. Now see what you're going to do. Now, I don't have a ruler, unfortunately, but I'm going to try my best. So you can take like a line, adjust it such that like three points are above. And nope, this line doesn't seem like cool, right? OK, this line is the same. I need a ruler for this, but I'm going to try to make sure that it comes out to be the best line ever. So one point, like in this graph, like one point is very strange. Like I got to go here, close to this one. Now it might be, it might work. So this point is down, one is up. Okay, this way. All right. So now I have almost. I've tried to make it the best way possible. If you see, this point is on the line. This point is above the line, and all these points are on the line, and this point is below the line. So I have all the points close to the line, and one is above and one is below. OK. Uh, yes, we'll do that, inshallah, tomorrow maybe. OK, so then you have to label this. OK, label it. Oh, my God. 
label. Say it is the best fit. That's very important. And then what you're going to do is you're going to make the worst fit line. So what is the rule for worst fit? So I don't have space to write, but I'm going to write here. So the worst fit line got to be, it's, it should basically start from like the top to bottom or bottom to top error bar. So one rule is this, and the other rule that must be followed, this is a must rule that always is followed, that all line must, line must go through all error bars. This is very important, okay. So let's do this, let's change the color. Let's try and use blue. So you can start from the top if you like to and then go right like this till the bottom. Now you see, not only it's going from the, the bottom to the top, but it is also crossing all the error bars, which makes it a perfect worst fit line that must be labeled as well. I hope you guys understand this. If you have any questions, please let me know. Now about like this line, if you have any questions that you have in mind right now, that how to draw, what should not be there, what should be there. So please ask me right now. So when you kept on drawing the best fit line over and over, I was I was just confused as to why you were doing it because I saw that the points that you put the line through were almost all on the line. Do four points or five points have to be going through the line? Or could it be that some points are above and some points are below? So, again, I'm going to tell you this. Even if no points come on the line, it's okay. Do you understand, buddy? Yeah. Now, what is the rule? Equal points above and below. So right now, what I saw was that it's good that like four points are on the line. It's just one point above and below. So that's cool. And if every point is on the line, that's even better. But it's not a rule to do that. But obviously, if somebody tries to draw a line like this, would you call, a, call this a best fit line? Not at all, sir. I'd, I'd be laughing. Because the thing is, although he has or she has followed the rule, the three points are above, three points are below. But the thing is, the line must be close to the points as well. Do you get it? Exactly. It should follow the shape of the line that the points are drawing. Exactly. Yeah. No. And the other thing is, both, somebody asked me this very important point, both worst and best must be a solid line. You're not supposed to make a dotted line, please. That is not allowed. Okay. All right. So pretty much we're done with this. And obviously, you're going to get like the four marks that you deserve now after doing so much. And now they say determine the gradient and include the absolute uncertainty. So to do this, First of all, you're going to find the gradient of best fit. And then you're going to find the gradient of worst fit. You need to do both. Now, what is the rule for gradient? Number one. So where do I write? Where do I write? Here I'm going to write, okay? Right here. So I can share this video with you people as well. So for gradient, first of all, dotted triangle must be shown. Okay, so that's one rule. The other thing is that the points you take must be at least 50% or greater away from each other. So that is the other rule. Please follow this. What I mean by this is 
for example if somebody wants to take like i really like i really like suppose on the best fit line let's see let's see if i like some point i don't like any point here this is not cool so i'll take this line okay i want to take this point okay so i'm going to take this point i'm going to make a dotted line right here okay and let's try this point as well so this was on this side was 0.01 i think so 2.5 2.6 so this is 2.6 and the other point on this is 0.18 so my point here for the first best fit point i'm going to write 0.26 and 0.18 so that's one of those points that i took now you need to try and find a point that is as far as possible which means this point seems all right to me so i'm going to go check what this point is and i'm going to make a dotted line okay like that this dotted line must be there so that the examiner know okay you're taking this point obviously like that and like this so you get a triangle this is 2.6 and on this side also a dotted line just take your time on this your question one should be finished like 30 minutes no more than that if it's going long just leave there and move to this one so this is 0.382 84 86 88 so this is 0.388 So one of those points is 0.26 and 0.388. So 0.26. Eh? What is this? This is not fair. How did this become 0.26? This is not 0.26, right? This is 0.16 actually. Okay, I got it wrong. Sorry. Okay. 0.216 and this is 26 and the other point was 0.388 just write the same significance please that is very important i believe yes this is fine okay now we got this now some people would try to take triangle this small and this triangle is not even 50% so this is not allowed please don't do that i hope you understand this Yes, if it's no, if there's no dotted line, you do not get any marks. So you have to make sure that you put a dotted line there. Okay, then you got to go towards the other one. Let's choose a color that is more prominent. Let's go with the orange one. Now let's see which point I like. I like this one. So I'm going to take this. You don't have to be very accurate with this, like. It's close. That's fine. This is zero point two 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 point two one, and that point is one point nine two zero point one nine two. So I'm going to write this as two point two one and zero point one nine two like that. Okay. Then let's take something far far away, and this point seems very legit. So let's do that. Please don't make a small triangle. That is the biggest mistake you can do. That would ruin your two marks there. And that's not good. Since you've done the same work that you're required to do, well, that's not fair. Okay. So right here. So this point, I think, is. 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.58, right here. And what is the other point? Let's see. That, my friends, is going to be put a dotted line, and that's going to be 0.382. Okay. So 0.382, and the other was. Two point five eight. Okay. So once you got, you get this, and now everything is easy. Look how beautiful it looks. And then go and check what happens next. So you're gonna find the gradient of best fit. So I'm gonna call gradient as B. 
So the, for the best fit, I'm going to say 0 0.388 minus 0 0.180 divided by 0 0.260 minus 0 0.216. And I don't need this anymore. So let's close this. 0 0.388 minus 0 0.180 divided by 0 0.260 minus 0 0.216. And that's going to be 4.72. Okay. So I'm going to take it to the three significant figures that I got already. I don't have a pink color in my color screen. I can pick one, but I don't know. It is too light. Okay, then it goes to the next one. Also, check if there are other, like, we don't have any units, right? We don't have any 10 raised to power something. So that's cool. That's easy. And then if there was something 10 raised to power, we have to include that as well. So then 0 0.382 minus 0 0.192. Yes. So yes. shouldn't the value be 0 0.472 instead of 4.72? I don't know. It was giving me like that. Let me check again. You calculated it. If it's coming like that, what can we do? But so why did you write 0 0.260? The x axis values are like 2.1, 2.2, right? Where? The gradient has to be, like, gradient doesn't depend on it. Like, if you divide 0 0.36 on number like this. Oh, you're right. I made a mistake, right? I'm sorry about that. Wait a second. You're right. It was 2.16. It was 2.60, isn't it? Yes. And this, oh, I wrote here correctly. Oh, my God. All right. My bad. 2.60 minus 2.16. Now it will be fine. Let's do that. 2.6, 2.16. Okay, 0. 0.472. Pretty good. Now, oh my goodness. Let's go to the next. This goes to 0. 0.58 minus 2.21. Okay, let's do that. If you're bad like me in calculating things, because I have a very bad habit of getting it calculated from my students, so you should recheck. Okay, sorry. So you got this, okay? Now, to find the uncertainty in gradient, you have to subtract the best minus the worst. So that's how you're going to get the answer for uncertainty. So let's do that. 0 0.513 minus 0 0.472. So you get something like 0. Point. So you're going to write it as 0 0.04, always in one significant figure. That's when uncertainty really plays a role. And then when you're writing the other answer, which is the best one, you have to write same decimal place as uncertainty. So this is the rule for uncertainty. You should remember this. Sir, sir, all right, then, yes, yes, you're right. I'm sorry about that. Sir, if there was supposed to be grams in one of the quantity gradient, convert the quantity to kg by calculating correct two. We leave it as it is. If it's, it's possible, if they ask you to do that, you can convert by dividing by 1,000. Okay, so we get this, and now let's move to the next. Next, it says, determine the y-intercept of the line of best fit. Do not include uncertainty. Thank you. Okay, sometimes he says that. So I'm going to explain how you can do this. So y-intercept, because this doesn't start from origin, so we can't do that. So we have to use y equals to mx plus c to do that. Just take another point on uh, the best fit. 
the yellow line was the best fit. I, I really like this one. I'm going to take this point. This seems like 2.42, 2.44, 2.46, 0.246. And this is 2.3. So we got two points. 2.3 and 2.46, 0.246. Okay, we two points. Now the y just add 0.246 equals to the gradient. Take this gradient 0.47. I would generally want to include, when I'm solving things, I'd like to include this whole number. I don't want to do with the uh, rounded values because sometimes it will give you a wrong answer. So don't do that. And see. Okay, now let's try this, please. 0.246 minus 0.472 times 2.3. So my y-intercept comes out to be negative 0 0.840. So I'm going to write it this way. Negative 0 0.840, like that. Um, then, obviously, because there's no units, and you know in the y-intercept, this is LG. LG has no units, so you don't have to write it. It's fine. OK, like this. Then let's go forward. Okay, if, what if, what if we had to calculate uncertainty? Okay, that would be something. So what you do is to find the uncertainty in y-intercept, you, you do y-intercept of best minus y-intercept of worst and use the same rules that I've told you before. Okay, so that's what. I need to bold up. Okay, all right, is it clear? Then use your answers A, C3, and C4 to determine the value of KQ. You do not need to be concerned with units and do not include absolute uncertainty. Okay, so first of all, we need to see what the gradient was. The gradient I re remember was Q, Y intercept I don't exactly remember. So let's go check what we did in the first part LG 2 pi minus half LGK. LG 2 pi minus half LG K. So this was the value. So gradient was basically 0 0.472, if I remember. So that would be Q. And Y intercept was negative 0 0.840 equals to LG 2 pi minus half. LGK. So you do uh, the part. So how do you do this? Please see. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to basically minus 0 0.840 minus log of 2 shift pi, which comes out to be negative 1.638 and equals to negative half LGK, divide half over there, divided by negative 0 0.5, which is going to be LGK equals to 3.28. Okay, so I'm going to do that. And then to find, to remove LG, you have to do 10 raised to power this value. Okay. So you use 10 power 3.28. So it's 1905. So it's 19. So my answer is 1905. I want to write it into like three significant figures. So I can write 1910 like that. Okay. So that should be the correct answer. Make sure that you have the in these values the right SF and the rule. Again, I'm telling you minimum in data plus or one more than that. So basically, you can write three or four. Okay. Then it says use your answer and D to determine the mass needed to give a period of one second. Okay. 
so we want to find the mass what is mass i don't know let's see where we can find the mass let's see the equation huh? this equation t equals to 2 pi m q under root k okay we're going to go here t equals to 2 pi m q under root k so we have the value of k we have the value of q uh, and we have one second so this is one two pi mass we need to find q is 0 0.472 divided by under root of 1910 so then m 0 0.472 is going to be under root 1910 divided by 2 pi so let's first do that let's keep it like step by step so that i do not make a mistake 6.96 and then you take log you want to take log or you want to take just uh, uh, root of this like you can do both of them that's up to you but that's that's really like you can take under root of this whole thing as well should we take under root of q we should so if i take root so m will be under root of 6.96 0 0.472 so how do you do in calculator there is basically an option to do that let me find where it is it is right here so shift this one right there if you can see on the screen the button i'm pressing oh i pressed it twice and then write 0 0.472 and then write the value you're rooting so that's going to be 61.0 do you guys understand this and it seems fair 61 grams is not a bad answer so now the misconceptions about this one so most of you might think Oh, my friend got 6,000 grams and I'm getting 61 grams. Is he right or am I right? There's no such thing. What the examiner is going to check is, examiner is going to check this method only. is required, okay? So if you've done the right method, you get full marks for this. If you've done the right method here, you get full marks for this. If you've done the right method. So it's all about the method. It has nothing to do with anything. So any value, if you got like the gradient wrong, because like, for example, I was doing this, I took 0 0.216. So if I had done all the exam with that mistake, I would have only gotten this wrong, zero, and then the rest of the things would be absolutely fine. There would have been no issues at all. I hope you guys understand that. Uncertainty can be that large. That is true. It's fine. Don't worry about that. Okay. So I hope you have uh, anything you'd like to ask. Please let me know from this paper. Anything in general? You have a question? Please let me know. Okay. So this. In this particular one, you should be aiming 15 out of 15. Now, why don't why do people miss out on this? Because at least out of one or 15 minutes, 45 minutes should be spent. Should be spent on this always. Nothing to worry about. Okay. Then let's move to what question number one says. So ideally, question number one should be done in 30 minutes because it's pretty simple. Now, some people draw very extensive drawings. So for drawing, I just want to tell you, your drawing should be number one neat, should be labeled, and should make sense. All right, should make sense. For example, let's see what they've given. They say student creates, uh, using an air blower, creates a vertical column of moving air. The student connects a motor of the air blower to a DC power supply. Okay. 
then say it suggested that the relationship is this one where g is the acceleration of free fall p is the power output k is a constant now this is not important what what is important is two things first it says it is suggested this is very important line the relationship is between this radius r and a so these are the two variables you need to work on so one of these will be independent one of these will be uh, dependent okay so dollar 1000 dollar dalo to baat hai ye kya hai 1000 rupaye dal rahe hain examiner ke paper mein hazar dollar pe dan it's not like so so rupaye hazar rupaye se kuch nahi hona okay then so then you gonna you gonna say that uh, then the next thing you want to read about this one this is the most important point so you have to design a relationship between these two and you need to determine the value of k so in the analysis part you need to make sure that you include this part and that's all all of this must not be followed it is not required okay now yeah the pani is swami why okay so what you going to do first of all we are going to look at we going to write when we starting give proper headings like you going to write what is your problem statement here in the problem statement you going to write two things number one you going to write independent variable just write independent and write dependent this writing these correctly will give you one mark and then the other thing you going to write this is one mark this is one mark is the control variable control variable is the one that you want to keep constant throughout the experiment okay now the independent variable let's look at the drawing now you see obviously uh, the radius of the ball like you can pick and choose different uh, you know objects like different balls and obviously the radius can be controlled so radius has to be the independent variable so i'm going to write radius r and the dependent would be obviously this height because of the radius it will go up or down right so the dependent variable should be h where is it height h now what do we need to control let's see so in this question we have r a g is constant as it will stay constant k is a constant so p is the factor that must be controlled because this is changing the equation so p is what what is p let's read p is the power okay so i'm going to write p should be controlled power of motor must be constant all right so you write this you get two marks out of this so problem statement of is two marks then you're going to write the method the method also includes the diagram which is very important hmm so the like they have done just put the blower okay and just put a table here you don't need to put anything else like a blower on the table like this that's all you need and just do it like this so you this is a symbol to say this is a hard surface that you put it on you don't need to draw a picture of your dog or you don't need to draw windows please don't do that you don't need anything like that then obviously this blower needs to be connected with some supply so just connect it if i were you i would connect it with like a power supply and the power supply needs to have uh, like sort of i think i think needs to have something like uh, maybe uh, like dc power supply so for dc you can write positive and negative you can show this or you can show this it's up to you a cell or something but this is a better one you can connect an ammeter and obviously you can connect a voltmeter across this to make sure you do that also you can also connect a uh, resistor okay and the resistor that you connect can be variable 
the reason why we want to connect a variable resistor is so that we can control the current because the wires get heated up and we want to keep the power constant so we don't want the current to change all right so make sure you, these small things can be um, like kept in mind all right now what you're going to do is then start labeling you say this is my variable resistor okay this is an ammeter this is a voltmeter and it can be done by pencil you don't need to take color pencil with you it's fine and this is the dc supply okay so when you've done this and say this is a floor this is a table all right so don't leave anything then then the next thing is what do we do about the height right so obviously you're going to draw the ball just the just draw the ball wherever you want to like this Obviously, it's like blowing air, so you 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 have to just leave it as it is, like this, and then draw a stand because you need to measure the height, right? So you guys have done AS, so it should not be a big problem for you. Draw a stand like this, and also use your ruler to do that. Do not make like very very like very bad lines. That would not be cool. And then just connect it connect the clamp and with the clamp you can connect a ruler okay ruler okay and frankly this ruler should be like till the bottom by the way and then just label it say this is my meter rule this is my stand with clamp. You can also write clamped rule. Okay. Then this is your ball. And obviously, from the drawing, you can see where the height needs to be taken from the top of the blower to the center of the ball. So just mark the center, mark a dotted line on the top, like this. And then just draw this, like this. Okay. All right. All right, like this. So you get it? This should be the drawing that you need. You do not need anything else. Please do not overcomplicate it. Just simply things that you need to know. That's all. OK, so all of this, unfortunately, drawing all of this only scores one mark. Sad. Now let's go forward. Now, how do we take method? Yes, rheostat and variable resistor is the same thing. So you can write rheostat if you want to. That's fine. OK, so now let's go to the method. Obviously, we need to find um, the power, right? So first of all, we can, we can use we can use voltage from voltmeter and current from ammeter to calculate power by doing power equals to vi okay like that So you can basically do this. And then what you need to do is you need to find the radius. So use a micrometer screw gauge okay, to find. Now, micrometer screw gauge basically gives you the diameter, by the way. It doesn't give you anything else. So to find diameter of the ball. And then you have to write divide diameter by two to find radius so everything should be explained very well then third point you were right about the distance right so you're gonna say i'm gonna measure the distance h using clamped meter rule 
now from where from top of lower to center of the ball like that i hope you guys understand that no no it's just that you guys need to a couple of you know just need to do a couple of papers before you go in this is just a method it has nothing to do with difficulty once you've done that then you're going to put the heading of analysis now, analysis is super simple so already they know from the equation you're going to pick this equation you're going to write it there 4 pi r cube g h 3 p k okay 4 pi r cube g h what this like this over 3 equals to p k okay over 3 equals to p k now what you're going to do is because you have to draw this now what i want to tell you is whatever is independent independent is always put on x axis and the dependent is always put on y axis this is a physics convention so you have to follow the same convention okay so we have to make um r as x axis and h as y axis so we're going to rearrange the equation so we're going to say 4 pi r cube g h equals to 3 p k and then h should be put on y axis so it should be isolated and then 3 p k over 4 pi r cube g should be written okay then separate r so h equals to 3 p k over 4 pi g times 1 upon r cube once you reach this then you can compare this equation with y equals to mx so you have h on the y axis as you can see you can compare and x on 1 upon r cube and the gradient would be this and now you start writing okay you say plot graph between h on y axis and 1 upon r cube on x axis like that okay so this should be your first point to make now the idea about y is equal to mx is that you want to say that the relationship that you're talking about relationship this statement should always be written relationship is valid if a straight line passes through the origin so this must be written if you haven't written this you won't get any marks now origin is basically zero and zero if this equation would have been compared to y equals to mx plus c maybe this there is an equation like that so then you would say relationship is valid like your statement would change like this you would say relationship is valid if a straight line passes through a y intercept so that's what you're going to write then Okay, so these are two different statements for this, and obviously this is for this. Then the third thing, obviously, he asked us to find the value of k, right? This k. So we know that from, from comparison, the gradient is equal to 3 p k over 4 pi g. So make k the subject. So k will be equal to gradient times 4 pi g divided by 3 p. And that would give you the three marks, those are required for making the correct analysis. So analysis, you should never lose it. If you reciprocate it, you do one upon h and r cube, that is also fine, no worries. Then your statement would change, that's all. Nothing changes, like you can write one upon h here and r cube on the other side. That's fine, no worries. Okay.
So cool. So then let's go forward. Then the next you would want to do is you have to put a safety consideration. For safety con consideration, you have to make a proper safety consideration. Like, for example, if you say I'm doing an electricity experiment, I would want to wear a helmet. That is absurd. You're not supposed to do that. So what are you going to write when you're doing an electricity experiment? You have to insulate your hands or the object you're touching, right? So the safety uh, consideration should be that obviously you're supposed to make sure that where insulated gloves when handling wires or electrical equipment okay so your comment should be this i will share a file as well oh, of course i might have shared it already so you guys can see what safeties uh, are required for what experiments Sir, how about saying use a sand tray to catch the ball? Now, I would not write that in this. Like, it is possible. It is possible to write that. But if the ball is, like, made of, obviously, it is very light. It could be a tennis, like, table tennis ball. It would damage you, right? Or the floor, do you think? So, I don't know. I would not write that. Okay, then comes additional details. So some common additional details are as follows. So these are always correct. So you don't have to worry about those. So you have to actually write one safety and at least five can be more. In fact, the more the merrier because there is no negative marking. In fact, if you do 10 of them and out of 10, five are wrong and five are correct, you will still get, no, there's no negative marking. They just give you zero there. Okay. So if you've written like, like if, even if you've written here, let's suppose you've written, use a sand tray to uh, prevent, like uh, Gatika and Khazani saying, prevent ball from bouncing, right? So that's what they're saying. Even if you write this, like two safeties, if this is correct and this is wrong, they would pick this and give you mark. They would not give you any negative mark. So writing more is better, okay, in that sense. So I just want to tell you that, okay? So then additional details, again, the more you write, the better it is. Now, how do we do this? First of all, first of all, always remember that one point is common. Number one, repeat the experiment for each value of the independent quantity that you have. What was the independent R? of r and take average of the dependent quantity which is h okay in this case dependent and this statement is same in every paper so you don't have to worry about that and then you're gonna say you want to comment on how you can make h and r the most uh say accurate okay so what you're going to do is you're going to say measure diameter from different orientations orientations means obviously ball can be like an oval you don't know it could be elliptical so the diameter might be different from different sides so you can take it from different orientations and and take average so that would be one point. Then for H, so we took 
it from the center. So we don't exactly know where the center is going to be, right? So to, to accurately measure the center, what we can do is we can take the height from the top of this to the bottom of the ball and the top of this to the top of the ball. And then we can like divide by two, subtract and divide by two. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say take height from top and then from bottom of ball till top of floor okay then explain this how do you explain this you say you do h top minus h bottom and then divide by 2 to find the center of the ball so that would give you another mark, obviously, because you, you are explaining how you would get to the center, right? That is one. You can also take like top. You can uh, basically add them and divide by two to get this two. That would give you the height. To find the height, that would even be better. Height of ball from center. So that's better. Then another point that comes into my mind is because you see, it is possible that your ruler might not be perfectly vertical. So you can add a set square to make sure it is perfectly vertical, right? So use a set square to make sure ruler is vertical, all right? Then another point that is coming to my mind right now is what if it was like there was air coming from the sides because there were, might be a fan or AC or window open. It could be something like that. Yes, obviously. You can write as many as this. Okay. So you can say then that uh, use a wind shield. Wind shield is basically to avoid the specific word of draughts. Draught means basically uh, you can put a shield around it like this. Okay. Oh my. Like this. Okay. In the experiment, that would help you not get like stuff from the sideways. Okay. Air from the sideways. So you can always do that. And how many of these are? Five we got. We're going to write some extra so that if you're wrong at some point, then we can also, you know, do this. Uh, what else can we do? Let me see. You guys have any idea to make it even better? Mm. Because because I think the air from this might not be always like constant. I don't know. It should be constant. But the ball might be rotating. What might be going sideways? So how about, because ball is like going up and down, it could go up and down. How about if we take, if we put a video camera and they record the motion with the cramp rule so we can exactly see where on the mean height it would be. So that would be a good idea. So let's do that. So record the height using a video camera. Oh, I don't video camera. Okay. Video camera uh, uh, with with clamp rule. Uh, and playback in slow motion. That would help you get it accurate. All right. Play back in slow motion. All right. Anything else we can do? I don't know. So we can mention power is equal to current times the voltage. I have already done that in the method right here. Okay. So I don't think that there's anything else that comes in my mind, but that's fine because we got extra points. We got one, two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, and it could be like some of them might be wrong, and then, but still, if they're five right, you get full marks. That's cool, right? Now let's head on to its uh, marking scheme, and see what they have written, and then see what we have missed, and then we can also include that in our work. Okay, so this was uh, October, November, nineteen fifty-five one. Let's open up the mark scheme. Let's see. Nineteen marking schemes five one winter five one winter five one okay good okay yeah so let's open it side by side let's see what we have done what we have done wrong so that we best way to analyze ourselves so R is the independent variable and I'm gonna mark it right now so that you guys can also see how everything is being marked and how what points you're going to get when you're basically doing this so let's take uh, a nicer color let's take purple okay so for writing r as independent variable and h as dependent we have gained one mark so this is the problem mark and then for control variable we got problem mark now in method he has said you need to have a labeled air lower we have it uh, ball vertically by I above the floor. We, we exactly have that. And vertical I, uh, vertical rule at least from the top of the ball. So we have it from the top of the ball. That's perfect. So by doing this, we just got one mark in this. So we have basically done it some extra. Okay, that's cool. So we got another method mark here. Then in the method it said, circuit diagram to determine word meter, we have circuit diagram made. So that also gives us one more mark. So that's one method mark here. And then use, um, use micrometer to diameter. And then we explained how to find diameter as well. Okay, that's cool. So we just need to write diameter. Okay, that's cool. We got this. And measure the distance between the uh, top, middle, or bottom. We wrote middle, so we got a method mark here as well. So method is done. Let's look at the analysis now. So analysis says plot a graph of h over one upon r cube. So we got an analysis mark here. And then relationship is valid if a line through zero and zero. And we wrote origin, which is good. Analysis mark one more. And then for k, it should be written four pi g, four pi g, and 3p and gradient. So we got analysis mark here as well. For safety, it says use large box tray to collect ball. Okay, you guys were right. I'm sorry. So safety here. And it says it has methods to avoid droughts. We have written it. So that means the drought point, we got one additional detail mark as well. So let me see. Where is it? I wrote drought somewhere. Okay, this one is the drought one, D. Okay. Then, uh, I don't know if this is, this might be wrong, I don't know. It should be correct. Chalo, So, anyway, then it doesn't give you any discredit, so that's fine. And then it says, uh, method to determine P using, okay, now see, the important point is, that because we have written method to P, he has given this. The one that we wrote already here, is basically a mark for the additional details. So it means we get another mark, even though we have written in method, but because we have written it so clearly, so we will also get a mark for additional detail here. Cool, right? So we're going to count the number of uh, purple things we have. Then we have written stand bench clamped rule vertically to, oh, so I've drawn that. It means I got an additional detail mark here as well. So it can be given from anywhere, by the way. Not, it is not necessary to write it here. This SF is two. Okay, then it says method to ensure clamp rule H is vertical. We have done it through the uh, set square. So that's another point right here. Then it says uh, R is equal to D by two. I wrote that. I wrote it some. Somewhere. I wrote it here, so I got additional detail mark here as well. Then it says 
Repeat diameter measurement. This is the common point that I was talking about. Repeat the experiment for R and determine average H. D repeat diameter values different direction and find a average. I, I do, did that as well. So di diameter here as well. Then method to de determine H, we did it. So determine, and this is just one point. There are not two points. So I took two, but it was just one. Then it says wait for the ball to bounce stationary. I did not write it. And video camera I wrote, so that's just T. So, okay. So now, as you can see, like by writing the additional details, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Basically, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight points for the fixed ones, right? Eight, nine points. And then for the additional details, which are six, the rest six marks. Out of those six, basically writing so many extra things, I have one here, two, three, I have uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have written nine. It means I have actually written, I needed six more, but I took, I have three extra points. Even if I had gotten something wrong, maybe this was wrong or maybe this was wrong, I would still score full because there's no negative marking. They will only check the correct points. So which means I will score 100% in this. So it is always good to write everything that you think can be associated with this. And that will help you get the most out of it. I hope you guys understand that, right? So that would be it. If you guys have any more questions, please let me know before I end this class now. Okay. So I'm going to put this file, okay, into your classroom, by the way. So uh, people who are within my class right now, they can access this file right now. They're all solved papers from whatever we have done up till now in uh, almost one month, more than one month. And for the people who want to get it, they I will also put it on Patreon. So export all as a PDF. All right, so I'm going to see you people in the next tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have just random class. You guys can suggest me a paper that is very difficult if you found one. And then obviously you guys can you know, comment on it, whatever. So what time tomorrow? Gatika, tomorrow it will be the same time. All right. Okay. See you guys then. Have a nice day. Bye. So I have a question. Yes, Gatika. I'm going to send you on WhatsApp. One second.